Next on ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso Weekend, the hunt continued this morning for a suspect after a string of murderers apparently all targeting members of one family. And a different gunman now dead after five people were killed in two separate shootings in the south. And more controversy in the race for the El Paso County Tax Assessor Collector where ethics violated. And in Storm Track weather, Iris. Your Saturday is going to be another warm one. Beautiful, but we're going to have to deal with those winds. I'll let you know how windy coming up. This is all the news you need to start your Saturday, April 23rd. ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso Weekend starts right now. Live where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso Weekend. Well, good morning El Paso and thank you for joining us and happy Passover. I'm Andrew J. Polk. An Ohio community is in shock after eight members of one family were gunned down. The family members were shot at four different properties. The victims include seven adults and a 16-year-old boy. <clears throat> they were found in homes near Piketon, about 60 miles south of Columbus. Authorities say all were shot in the head, and it appears some were killed as they slept, including a mother in bed with her four-day-old baby nearby. The infant and two other small children there were not harmed, though. Authorities say the victims are members of one family. Investigators say none of the deaths appear self-inflicted, so they believe at least one assailant is now on the run. Law enforcement officials say whoever is responsible should be considered armed and dangerous. And a gunman in Georgia is now dead after five people were killed in two separate shootings. Georgia authorities say the man suspected was found with an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Columbia County Sheriff's Office says 50-year-old Wayne Anthony Hasbaugh's body was recovered by authorities in his northeastern Georgia home this morning. Authorities say the Friday night shootings stem from a domestic dispute that left three, women and three men and two women dead. Police say three people were shot at one location in Appling and two others were shot dead in another location about a mile away and believe some of the victims were related to the suspect's wife. Meanwhile, in Las Cruces, a law father is accused of beating his three-year-old son after he broke some Xbox games. This after he was out on bond for murder charges against him stemming from 2014. Detectives say 20-year-old Lawrence Josh Lucero was watching his son while the mother was at work. According to police, he picked up the boy's mother about 30 minutes late and told her it was because he had to spank the child. When the mother got home, she says the boy had bruises and swollen lips. He was taken to Memorial Medical Center with, non, with minor injuries. Lucero is charged with one count of intentional child abuse, which is a third-degree felony. He's also accused of second-degree murder in the stabbing death of 17-year-old David Escamilla. Lucero is now behind bars, and prosecutors are expected to request that Lucero's bond be increased. <laughs> Border Patrol agents, family, and friends said their last goodbyes as Jose Barraza was laid to rest yesterday. Barraza was killed in a car crash Monday after he worked an overnight shift. The crash involved a semi-truck near Fort Hancock. His wife Donna told us Barraza was, quote, an amazing father, husband, son, brother, and friend. Then we talked to a Hudspeth County Sheriff's Lieutenant at the funeral who told us Barraza could always be counted on in an emergency. Always there. He was always there to help somebody that's, that was in need, somebody that was hurt, and he was one of the first ones that tried to save somebody's life. Barasa leaves behind a wife and two young sons. The cause of the crash is still under investigation. Some controversy now in the race for El Paso County Tax Assessor Collector. It's a runoff between incumbent Ruben Gonzalez and former Chief Deputy Tax Assessor Collector Siria Rocha. Rocha is accusing Gonzalez of unethical leadership. On the day of the March 1st primary election, one of Rocha's campaign workers saw Gonzalez's chief deputy campaigning for him. That's him in the chair seen in the picture at this polling station. Suspicious, Rocha filed a public information request asking for his time card that day. ABC 7's Ashley Rodriguez picks up the story. He was paid for that day, like if he had been in the office. This is the timesheet Siria Rocha received. It says Chief Deputy Arturo Pastrana, who earns 80 grand per year with benefits, worked eight hours. But Rocha says it should say he was either on vacation or using personal leave to campaign. I believe, in my opinion, is that he was caught. There wasn't any leave available for him to take, so he decided that the taxpayers' monies would pay for that 
one day of him campaigning. I think she's incorrect in her interpretation. County Tax Assessor Ruben Gonzalez says his deputy is salaried, on call 24-7 and classified as an exempt employee. His time was his own time on that particular day and he can do anything he wants to do on his own time off. So there is no violation of policy. Gonzalez said he keeps track of his employees' hours. If they work over 40 hours in a week, he'll track the additional hours and let them take it off at a later time. He says that's what Pastrana was doing on March 1st, and that an automatic program records eight hours on the timesheet, whether he works more or less than that. You are not allowed to campaign during regular working hours unless you do take very specific type of leave. She points to the Texas Ethics Commission Code, which says, do not use state time or state equipment to work on an individual's political campaign. She knows what the rules are, and she being an exempt employee should know better that this is a 24-7 position. Ashley Rodriguez, ABC7. Gonzalez says he also checked with the county's HR department, which agreed with his interpretation. We want to confirm that. The HR department is telling us a slightly different story. Quote, this matter was not discussed with the approval prior to, with the office prior to the approval, rather, nor does this office routinely provide such approval or clearance. However, we requested the hours worked by Pastrana for the month of February, and records show he worked more than 12 extra hours, so he was able to take a day off without shortchanging taxpayers. The runoff election is May 24th. Early voting starts on the 16th. We're getting to your storm track weather now. Let's get your first forecast for storm tracker Iris Lopez. Good morning, Iris. Good morning, Andrew. Good Saturday morning to you all. We have made it to the weekend and warm temperatures. That will, that's what we can expect for your weekend right now. Want to take a live look outside because the sun came out to play finally, shining on those beautiful mountains over at Powell Elementary School. This is sponsored by the storm track weather net by ma mattress firm. Now we're going to talk about temperatures right now. If you're going to be heading out early for your Saturday, look at this. We are already in those 60s, 61 here in El Paso, 60 in Las Cruces. We have those 50s over in Rio Doso and Alamogordo and Tier C and Deming in those upper 50s. Winds right now, calm here in El Paso, Las Cruces, calm two, three miles per hour, pretty much all across the board. Guadalupe Pass, breezy, 14 miles per hour. Let's see what your afternoon, picnic afternoon forecast looks like. 78 by noon, those upper 70s. Then 84 is going to be our expected high. We're going to reach that by 4 o'clock. Now, I am answering all your very important weather questions. For instance, should I take a sweater out this morning, this afternoon? Can I let my hair loose, ladies and gentlemen? Plus, what should I do today? If you have no plans, well, I have so many things that I can let you know to do. All that coming up, Andrew. All right, thanks. I'll check back in just a bit. In the meantime, though, a city leader and one organization are taking heed to Uber's latest threat. Uber, the popular app that puts those looking for a ride in touch with drivers, tells city leaders in a letter it will cease to operate in El Paso if a city ordinance passes, if the city council passes an ordinance, rather, that puts them in the same category with taxis. ABC7 Jerry Nahara has the story. The app has not only gained popularity since it started in 2014, but it's also provided employment for hundreds of drivers. But taxi drivers across the nation have argued that Uber drivers don't have to pay to get costly permits and it puts them at an unfair advantage. But the idea of losing Uber in El Paso has some concern. The ordinance was to try to level the playing field with the taxi drivers here so that they could compete better with other companies like Uber. District 1 City Rep Peter Swartzbein is talking about the vehicle for hire ordinance. The ordinance will go before City Council in May. An ordinance Uber tells city leaders would require drivers to complete unnecessary and duplicative steps that make it difficult for them to earn extra money and hurt our ability to ensure that riders have access to reliable and affordable transportation. Uber is a wonderful tool um, that really enhances the quality of life of many different El Pasoans from the east side to the west side, from downtown central um, to the northeast. Swarzbein tells me he understands arguments of taxi companies need to be heard. I think it, it comes down to a balance. You know, um, other cities have lost Uber there. Um, I think that we can, we can have a system in place where, um, you know, it's, it's fair to the rights of, of El Pasoans, but also um, make sure that Uber stays here in El Paso. Swarzbein fuels Uber in El Paso can be an advantage for many. It's the kind of amenity that that keeps drunk drivers off the road, that allows um, 
citizens of El Paso who may be in between jobs or want to supplement income, the ability to do so on a weeknight, on a weekday, on a weekend. And speaking of drunk driving, we're able to do everything through our telephone now and so I see a lot of individuals um, that are in their youth, um, that are young adults that do take Uber as an option rather than getting behind the wheel. Mothers Against Drunk Driving Program Manager Vanessa Marquez says the organization does have a partnership with Uber but wants to see all options open. Whether it is a shared ride like, a shared ride like Uber or taxi, you know, as many options that we have, that's be better for our community because it's just making our roads a lot safer. Uber has ceased operation in Galveston, Midland, and Corpus Christi this year alone. City Council will vote on the new version of the vehicle for higher ordinance on May 17th. Reporting for Good Morning El Paso Weekend, I'm Jerry Nakeda. How did you celebrate Earth Day? Yesterday, the El Paso Catholic Diocese celebrated it by planting trees and starting a community garden. The diocese teamed up with the op organization Make El Paso Green. The organization both grows and donates trees around the El Paso area and has already planted over 1,400 trees. They help educate El Pasoans about how to take care of their trees and encourage the community to be more active in the environment. That trees are very important for mitigating uh, the current uh, global climate crisis and situation that we have. That's the alternative. It's important to have trees in your life and in your house and there's just so much that they do for El Paso. This event shows one little step that anybody can take. Plant a tree. Uh, find ways to uh, use your water more efficiently. Uh, think about recycling and so on. We all can do our part and care for this beautiful creation of God that uh, he's entrusted to us. And if you would like to visit the garden, it's located at 499 St. Matthew Street. And El Paso and Fighting Hunger also celebrated Earth Day, but in a different way. Yesterday, they teamed up with the San Vicente Food Bank to give about 250 families food. According to Feeding America, one in six El Pasoans is food insecure. The San Vicente Family Health Center helps provide community-based primary health care with particular concern for the poor and needy. And the celebrations for Earth Day don't stop just yet. Today, the El Paso Zoo is holding a party for the planet. The celebration includes the orangutan baby Kalesi's first birthday along with live entertainment, pinatas, games, and much more. It starts this morning from 10 and goes till 4 in the afternoon and will be held again tomorrow morning. And downtown building owner William D. Billy Abraham could face a penalty of up to $2.6 million. According to news partners at the El Paso Inc., city documents show Abraham faces $1,000 a day for the 2,158 days he has not complied with a city order. An examination of some downtown buildings revealed the conditions have become increasingly dangerous. The buildings include the American Furniture Company, the Richard Capel Building, and the Crest Building, all owned by Abraham. The city's Buildings and Standards Commission will hold a public hearing this week to determine if the American Furniture Co. building is in compliance with city orders. The meeting is scheduled for 5.30 p.m. Wednesday at El Paso City Council Chambers. For more on this story and to pick up your copy of the El Paso Inc. with stories like what you need to know about the new Alamo Draft House Cinema and how to get inside before it officially opens and how much the city says it will find the owner of a downtown building if he doesn't make it secure like we just told you about and why Uber is threatening to pull out of El Paso if it has to go along with new regulations being considered. El Paso Inc. is online at elpasoinc.com and available for home and business delivery. Call the number there at the bottom of your screen, 534-4422 to subscribe. There's been some pretty interesting weather in the borderland heading into the weekend. But coming up on Good Morning El Paso weekend, spring snow hitting the Sierras, causing some big surprises for commuters there. It is 8.13 right now, taking a live look at traffic this morning. This is Loop 375 at Escarate. Traffic moving along just fine. There are some scheduled closures going along certain sections of here for the weekend, both overnight and into your week. For more details, over on KVI.com. And Storm Track Weather, Iris. I'm helping you plan ahead, answering all those very important weather questions. Your hour-by-hour -hour forecast coming up. You're watching EBC7, where news comes first.